I think one of the advantages of oscillometry is the fact that it can be done by people, but uh, is the fact that it's done under normal tidal gradient. And so in the in the post-op phase, there, you know, in lung transplant, there, there is chest pain, there's chest discomfort, there is um, there are there's pleurofusion. A lot of the patients that I follow are very debilitated prior to transplant and um, are not significantly improved in terms of their physical conditioning within the first one or two months post transplant. And, and so these patients, and with these patients, we can do oscillometry on them and following. And, and, I, and I also want to make, make the comment though that oscillometry is really easy, but we still have to, to follow really good quality control guidelines in terms of its conduct. But if we do that, we can actually get very accurate measurements of respiratory mechanics in these patients very early on post-transplant. I think that oscillometry as a, will give you a baseline value of how good that transplanted lung is from its get-go. And we don't get that information from, from, from spirometry because spirometry is effort dependent. There are some very old publications that have looked at the spirometry, look at changes in FEV1 and FEC over time. And, and it takes anywhere between six to 18 months before patients reach their peak value. And we colloquial, lung transplant uh, physicians colloquially say, well, you know, this, this lung is improving. But I will, sort of, I, I will argue that may, maybe it's not the lung that's improving, it's that the fact that the patient is improving. They're no longer in pain. They're, they're actually, their the muscle strength is improving. So the FEV1 and FEC is actually a reflection of the overall physical status of the patient rather than the status of the lung itself. Mm -hmm.